Then I'm in the process of getting my old David Bradley fired up again. I bought this thing from a neighbor oh, many years ago. And I used to use it a lot, but I haven't used this thing for like 25 years. Incredibly handy device though. Uh, like I said, it's a David Bradley. They were sold by Sears. And there's just an unbelievable assortment of attachments available for these, or there was at the time. They're, they've gotten to be rather collectible, so it's getting a little hard to find some stuff for them. Mine came with the sickle mower. Yeah, it's got to be like a three foot mower that mounts on it. You know, it just clips underneath. But they had dozer blades and plows and cultivators. I made up a plow and I've got a cultivator that works behind it. I, I should make a dozer blade, it'd be kind of handy. Uh, they had a buzz saw that mounted on the front, a thousand watt generator, a lot of different stuff. Uh, what I used to use it for a lot, okay, this is the pulley that, that will run the, the mower. And they're kind of cool because they got regular clutches on them. It isn't like a belt tightener thing, it's, it's a clutch. But I used to use this to run a pump jack or spin a car alternator to charge up a battery. And I used to use it uh, on the washing machine. I have an old Maytag that has an outside pulley that was made for a gas motor. So you just drive this thing over there, throw a belt on it, you could run the washing machine. You know, it was really handy. In fact, it, it got to the point where it was so handy, it had me worried because I was kind of dependent on this machine because I was running a lot of stuff off of one machine. You know, so I gradually diversified, bought a rotor tiller, you know, and got different. And so this kind of fell into disuse. But like I say, incredibly handy tool. And they are getting to be very collectible. So uh, I figured, well, I better get it running again. <laughs> you know, they're really simple, which is the good part. You know, the only thing, like Troy built, made a similar device, but it was heavier duty. And I think they had like a three speed and a reverse or, or something, you know. These things, there's no reverse, there's no different speeds. But very simple. You know, it's, this happens to be, I'm pretty sure it's a Briggs and Stratton, though the, the plate on here, of course, says Sears. But I'm pretty sure that's a, like a horse and a half Briggs. I haven't worked with these particular motors a lot because most of the most of the Briggs I use are the smaller, like three quarter horse. This is big enough where it's got a centrifugal governor on it, but nice big old updraft carburetor. You know, they're, they're just really a nice simple machine. I took this all apart yesterday and cleaned the whole fuel system and the carburetor out because you know it's been sitting for a long time. And I think this one is, uh, it's got to be like a 49 or a 50 because that's when they came with the knobby tires, otherwise they came with the lug tires. I do actually have a set of lug tires I could put on it. They're weird too, they're 16 inch with a three lug bolt, bolt pattern, you know, so they're uh, not real common. They used to have tire chains on them and stuff too. You know, for plowing snow, <laughs> they did a lot with a small motor. But they came with very various motors on, uh, some had Continentals on them. And it's common nowadays, a lot of people uh, will take and put a, a newer Briggs type motor on there. Because it's a basic bolt on, you know, pretty variable what motor you use. But I like these old. It's a cool machine, but like I say, when this hood is down, 
You have this pulley that's exposed so you can run power onto anything. And they've got a kind of a well, there's a kind of a kickstand, but you don't have an implement on the front. You have to have the kickstand down or so they tip over. But they've got a, a sort of a, a drawbar arrangement here that you can hook stuff to and then things pin in here. But really it, it's, a, it's a big transmission. Well, and you hear that clicking, but it is. It's meant to drive, there's ratchets on the wheels. So when you make a corner, one wheel has to free turn. There's no differential to them. It's all done with the ratchets. So if you will freewheel, you have to kind of watch them going down a hill. Because they can actually kind of run away from you. Because <laughs> you know, they, they won't hold themselves back. They'll just click, 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 so away they go. But cool machine. And they've got the old where you gotta wrap a rope around them to start them. You know, and they're kind of a weird uh like this is, is where they have the it's actually embossed in the metal the David Bradley part. But it's a weird Kind of a light orange or light red, you know, almost a pink color. Though they call it red, and this is some kind of a uh, like a metal green, uh, like an Oliver has on it. But like I said, they've gotten to be so popular that you can actually buy paint and stuff for them, the original. But I I don't think I'll uh, get into too much paint and it'll leave her be. But you have to wind the rope around them to start them. They got this really nice like a hood latch that holds it open. Regular old manual choke. They're, they really are a nice machine. A extremely versatile machine. But that's where like I said I got to the point where I was using it for so much stuff it had me a little concerned. Because when everything you do is depending on one motor. Because I used to charge up batteries, you know, if the wind, you know, I was using the wind charger and if the wind hadn't blown for a while and I needed more power, well, I'd run, you know, drive this over, hook it onto a generator. It's like a portable power unit. <laughs> but the little sickle mower works really great too. But I'll have to make up a dozer blade because the hook, those kind of implements, there's slots in here underneath the motor. You just hook anything in there. And there's another hooking point on the front. They're just really versatile machine. And fun to play around with. But like I say, they they use regular clutches. And then you have levers to engage, engage, and disengage. No fancy safety stuff. Really straightforward, versatile piece of machinery. But I've got to pull a flywheel off. I got ignition problems. He's a little weak on the spark, but I got the carburetor all straightened out. And it's not a big deal. You know, I've worked on enough of these old brigs. The only thing that would be bad is if the ignition coil itself is bad, they can end up running you a little money. But if I had to put $70 in a new coil, I guess I wouldn't cry. It'll give me a jolt, but it's not enough to make a decent spark, so I gotta pull the points out and take a look at them.